Welcome back to the National Heads Up Poker Championship presented by GoDaddy.com at Caesars Palace. Everyone in the round of 32 has one victory. Today, the task is simple. Win one more to make the money. Here are the eight matches in the clubs and spades brackets. At table one, Barry Greenstein and Ayaz Mahmood. Table two is Jason Mercier and Andy Block. At table three, we'll see Daniel Cates and 2003 World Series champ, Chris Moneymaker. On table four, the battle of the Live Bs, Olivier, Live B112, Bousquet, and Live Barry. Now, Liv, you went from playing Jason Alexander to Olivier Bousquet. What are your thoughts? Um, it's a little bit of step, a step up in terms of uh, heads up, sit and go experience. We could just say that. Yep. Olivier, you're known as a heads up specialist, probably one of the best in the world. Does that add any pressure on you? No, I mean, it makes me feel more comfortable because I'm, you know, comfortable with this format. But, you know, Liv's a great player, so it's probably going to come down to who gets better cards. All right, good luck. At table five, a rematch from last year's quarterfinals, Doyle Brunson and Dennis Phillips. Table six, Patrick Antonius and Eugene Kachalov. Over at table seven, Carlos Mortensen and David Oppenheim. And rounding out this side of the bracket, reigning main event champ, Jonathan Duhamel, and World Series bracelet winner, Antonio Espandiari. Are you ready for today? Of course I am. What do you think about Antonio? Well, he's the magician, so it should be tough, but at the same time, it should be fun, so yeah. All right, Antonio, I see you have your shoes off again. Are you ready to go? Very ready. I want to stake out the world champ. All right, let's do it. Let's get the cards in the air. Greg Hummer alongside Ali Najad. Here as the round of 32 gets underway. Strong words from Antonio, Ali. Strong attire. Look for the comfort collection at your local Target this spring. <laughs> he gets the button. Of course I do. Always, the favorite always gets the button. It's just not fair. Jonathan gonna look to complicate Antonio's life. Lucky to be here after being in trouble against Caesars qualifier Mel Whitmire. King what seven suited surprise. for Jonathan. Opens for a raise. I mean, God, that's just astonishing. Min raise from Duhamel. Astonishing. <clears throat> Antonio apparently expecting the min raise game plan. And with 10-8, he calls. Jonathan pairs his seven gut shot for Esfandiari. Antonio bets 1,700. That's sending a statement. He doesn't want Duhamel to think he's just going to be passive and check every time he defends his big blind. Jonathan calls. Duhamel adds a flush draw. Asfandiari with a double gutter now. That'll give Antonio a reason to fire the second barrel. He bets 3,700. Duhamel's got a huge hand here, but he doesn't need to get crazy. He calls. Trip sevens for Jonathan. Now he can get a little crazy. <laughs> Antonio completely bricked out. He bets 8,600. He could have shut down. This bet is designed to get Jonathan off of a five or a four. He's not going anywhere. He raises to 21,400. 21,400. Oops. Antonio's got no choice but to fold. Nice hand, sir. Thank you, sir. They're so polite. Were you guys betting on it? Uh, they were. I didn't. No. I was one that, I'm like the kid that needs the, the thing in the lanes. And the thing is, I'm like super competitive in all sports, so I hate right, being right, right. just so unbelievably bad. Bousquet with Jack Six. Min Rays. 9 8 for Liv. She calls. Liv Barry gonna get her first dose of Liv B. <laughs> Liv pairs her eight. She checks. Olivier bets 1,200. Oh. Quick call from Liv. Standard continuation bet. Standard call with bottom pair. Olivier pairs his jack to move ahead, but Boree adds a two-way straight draw. Check, check. Liv makes her straight. Check. Check, check on the end, and Liv wins a small pot. Let's set you straight for the format here in the round of 32. Chip stacks now up to 50,000. Blinds begin at 3 and 600. And as always, we're playing No Limit Texas Hold'em. Today, 
the round of 32 in the clubs and spades brackets. So focusing on the clubs bracket right now, Ali, what stands out for you? They don't call it the feature table for nothing. Duhamel and S. Fandiari will be the duel to watch. And how about when we shift to spades? That's where you want to keep an eye on the Daniel Cates-Chris Moneymaker matchup. I've heard whispers around the room that this may be the year of Dan the Jungle Man. Is it? Because it sounds like the same to New York accent to me in New Jersey. Um, I don't know. I think there are probably different types of New York accents, like Staten Island and Brooklyn accents and stuff like that. I've never been really remotely good at no. imitations or anything like that. Well, what's the matter you? <laughs> you don't know how to do an imitation? King well. 10 for Olivier. Min Rays. Jack 10 suited for Liv. She oh. calls. Accenting her big blind with an extra 600. <laughs> Liv pairs her jack. She checks. Olivier's an aggressive enough player that she can count on him to fire the continuation bet more often than not. Bousquet bets 1,200, and Bory calls. Bory with an open ender, and Bousquet with a two-way straight draw. Queen would be a real zesty river card. Bousquet would make the king high straight, but he would only have a queen high. After Liv checks, Olivier oh. bets 2,500, and Liv calls. Bousquet pairs oh. his king to make the best hand. That's an ugly river for Liv. She checks. Bousquet bets 4,000. About 40% of the pot. And Liv calls. That's a king. Nice river. Passive play isn't without its downsides. Liv didn't do anything wrong there. It just didn't work out. At the feature table, Jonathan Duhamel up over 26,000 in chips. Antonio spotted him a big lead in the first hand of the match by three-barrel bluffing unsuccessfully. Esfandiari was 6-5. He raises to 1,400. 10 trace suited for Jonathan. A re-raise to 4,700. We call that a light three bet. Designed to be big enough to allow Antonio to get away from a hand like 5-6 offsuit. But instead, he re-raises to 11,300. Clearly, he's got a read on Jonathan Duhamel as being weak. And Jonathan folds. No guts, no glory. At table four, Olivier Bousquet up roughly 12,000 in chips. Important for Liv to shake off having lost that pot with top pair on the flop. She looks at 6-5 and limps in. Jack Deuce for Bousquet. Check. He checks. Excuse me. Gesundheit. Bori pairs her six. Bousquet flops two pair jacks and deuces. Bet 600. And bets 600. Raise to 1500. Liv raises to 1500. She's decided not to play passive two pots in a row. Olivier calls. The turn misses both players. Bousquet checks. Just in case Liv was on a spade draw. She That's bets 2,300. 20, Olivier calls. Oh. That's the right play. Don't want to raise and be faced with an all-in, possibly, forcing you to muck two pair. Seven of spades, Bousquet's Jackson Deuce is still best. But an ugly-looking board. If he was worried about a flush on the turn, he's definitely worried about one now, as evidenced by his check. She's reaching, Ali. She's got an idea. That's and 5, bets 5,000. This is so much easier said than they done. Bet 5,000. And Bousquet folds, folds the best hand. And has a lead nice this bluff. Has a lead doesn't mean anything saying Liv has a lead in this match, don't know
Greenstein. Uh, I asked my mother. Jason Mercier. Andy Black. Daniel Jungleman, 12 kids. Chris Money Megary, a World Series of Poker champion. Olivier Bousquet. Live the Iron Maiden Bury. Dolo. Texas Dolly Brunson. Dennis Phillips. Patrick Antonius. Eugene Kachalov. Carlos Mortensen. David Oppenheim. Jonathan Duhamel, World Series of Poker champion. Antonio the Magician Esfandiari. Duhamel and Esfandiari at our featured table right now. Jonathan with a 3-2 to two chip lead. I was ready that time. Yeah. It was not Ace ready. Jack, but it's good. I'm not going anywhere. Oh, I think you were, buddy. That Ace Jack looked a lot like 5-6 off suit. Duhamel with 10 deuce and a min raise. Esfandiari, king seven. He calls. You notice he's playing the psychological game with Duhamel a little bit. Any edge you can gain. Jonathan pairs his 10. Broadway draw for Esfandiari. He checks. Jonathan checks as well. Trip 10s for Duhamel. Antonio bets 1,200. Little cheap shot. Jonathan raises to 3,500. That should end this date. And it does. Antonio can tell Jonathan all about the ace king he just laid down. Today's feature table brings together a couple of poker players whose previous jobs might surprise you. 2010 World Series of Poker main event champ Jonathan Duhamel used to pick strawberries. And bracelet winner Antonio Esfandiari sold newspaper subscriptions. Clearly times have changed a little bit, Ali. Now combined, the two have 14 million in live tournament winnings and both are vying for a spot in the round of 16. So, do you like the strawberry picker or the salesman? Well, with all due respect to the agriculture industry and the fact that Jonathan Duhamel has won the World Series of Poker main event, I'm picking Antonio Esfandiari. He is one of the greatest No Limit Hold'em players in the world right now, both in cash and tournaments, and he's finally broken the seal. He had lost five consecutive times in the first round of this event. Comfort and confidence are a big part of his casual style at the poker table, and I like him through. If they only knew back on the strawberry fields that Duhamel would be the world champ, you know? Guess who's listening in on our stand-ups? I guess so. Jonathan up almost 22,000 in chips. Antonio looks at 8-7. And he raises to 1,400. Ace-9 for Duhamel. He calls. Jonathan could have easily three-bet here. Neither option is incorrect. Esfandiari makes eights, Duhamel nines. Check. check, check. Very textured board, no reason for Antonio to try to fire on the flop. He adds a flush draw. Jonathan bets 1,700. It's a pretty cheap number for Antonio to call with 4,500 in the pot. Six of diamonds, Duhamel will win this pot unless Esfandiari gets him off his hand. Jonathan bets 4,100. Oh, I think you have me, sir. I hate to pay you off, but I hate to fold the best hand, too. It's kind of a predicament, you know? He looks pretty serious over there. Busted flusher straight draw, about the only thing Antonio can beat. A payoff it is. Antonio digging himself even deeper into the hole as Jonathan extends his lead. It's been a long heads-up drought for Esfandiari. He hadn't gotten past the first round since 2005. Before the hand, it was pretty much a coin flip. You know, the four cards out, one card to come. He's a pretty big favorite. And it's a five! That five on the river was very tasty. My dad was there sweating me, so how can I not get there? It feels good. I mean, the first year I did well, I tied for third, basically. To go the last X amount of years and not win a single match is pretty grotesque. And so it felt really nice to win my first match. <laughs> it's so sick that I had to hug the dealer. 
<laughs> nice impersonation. Well, at the moment, Antonio not doing so well. He's down over two to one in chips. Jonathan looks at king four. With the chip lead, Jonathan can continue to apply pressure, but instead he's limping here, mixing it up. This is interesting. Check for Antonio with eight deuce. What a flop. Trip fours for Duhamel. Antonio pairs his eight and bets 800. He likes to lead. Jonathan raises to 2,200. This is kind of dirty. It's so obvious when you just call that there's a chance you've got trips, but when you raise on the flop, nobody gives you credit for that. Antonio calls. Six of spades. Both players have a spade, but Duhamel's king the best flush draw. Antonio has kicker problems on the eight. Can't beat a flush, can't beat a four. After check, check, Duhamel's trip fours hold up. But now Esfandiari's got to be wondering what the heck Jonathan's got that he would check the turn with. He checks. Jonathan bets 2,600. And Antonio calls. Clearly thought that Jonathan was just trying to bluff on the paired flop. But guess what? You're wrong. You're watching the 2011 National Heads Up Poker Championship from Caesars Palace, Las Vegas, the home of champions. Presented by GoDaddy.com. Welcome back to the National Heads Up Poker Championship presented by GoDaddy.com. It's the round of 32 in the clubs and spades bracket. At our featured table, Jonathan Duhamel on the left has the lead over Antonio Esfandiari. A lead which has continued to grow since the first hand of this match. King Deuce suited for Antonio. He limps in. Ace-Queen suited for Jonathan. He raises to 2,900. Another 2,100 for Antonio to call. Not mandatory, but you don't want to set a precedent of limping in and then folding to the raise. He does call. More diamonds. Duhamel with a nut flush draw. Esfandiari the king high flush draw. You could see this getting ugly. Esfandiari with the king high would rather try to win the pot here with the draw. Antonio raises. I'm all in. Jonathan puts them all in and a snap call from Antonio. Oh boy. Oh man, so sick. I run good. Oh, I run good, good. Yeah, I know, I know. And we're all nice hand. in on the feature table. Deuce, Dad. Deuce. Here's a turn. Antonio's <laughs> gone from a flush draw to a pair draw. And Both players make the flush. Duhamel's going to keep that smile and move on. Yeah, man. Impressive wire-to-wire -wire victory for the first-timer in this event. He's now in the money. At table four, there's Olivier Bousquet and Liv Barry, two competitors who can stake a claim to the same nickname. Today I'm playing against Liv B, but I am also Liv B. I think I'm the real Liv B, but everyone tells me I'm the fake Liv B. If I do win, it makes it bittersweet because you know, she's a friend, and I cheer for her when she's, you know, when she's playing, so, you know, I never want to see her lose. It's just like a dream come true that we're playing against each other. I think poker players in general tend to be pretty competitive people, but the two of us, I think, happen to both be on the high end of that range. What are we gonna do? There's too many live bees. <laughs> Not sure that single's gonna be dropping anytime <laughs> soon. <laughs> I liked it though, she's talented. This match living up to the hype, chip stacks relatively even. Do you know when this goes out? For being up against one of the best on, heads on up a... online oh, sit and go players in the world, oh. Liv Barry's managed to hold her own so far. Liv looks at pocket fives. Raise 12. Makes a min raise. Nine seven suited for Olivier. He calls. Set of fives for Bori. Bousquet with a double gutter. 15 the hard way. He checks. Liv bets 1,300. 
Olivier raises to 3,300. No reason to slow play. This is a very draw heavy board. She re raises to 8,200. At a girl. Bousquet calls. And a call. Olivier pairs is seven. Does put a third heart on the board. Okay. Check, check. check. Liv being cautious. It's a six. Bousquet makes a straight on the river. Four hearts out there, though. Real hard to bet the nine high straight. Both players the check the river, and Bousquet rolls over the winner. Couldn't ask for an uglier river with a set of fives. Right, right. Yeah. Runner, runner. So Liv not pleased how that went down. Let's send it to Leanne at the featured table. Antonio, obviously you ran into a big hand. Are you happy with the way you played it? I mean, yeah, the hand kind of plays itself. We fought before Fustra on this structure. It's going all in. I, that was just against the worst hand I could possibly see. How was he as a player? Tough. Tough. Okay. He never gave up. He raised a lot of buttons and, you know, I had to try and take a stand. Right. Jonathan, you had a bit of a tough time with the Caesars qualifier. Do you think that made you more focused today? Uh, well, I think it was just I got a lot more hands today than I did uh, during the first match. Uh, Anthony was very tough and, you know, I got a hands when I needed to have some. So, I mean, the, the last hand played, uh, played itself. So, I don't know, it would just run good and, yeah. All right, you're on to the next round. Just yeah. keep winning. Yeah, cool. All right, thank you. All right, we'll take a look an all-in situation at an outer table. Jason Mercier on the high. left holding a6, a6 and a huge chip lead. lead over Andy Block. Andy Not surprised to see Andy take a stand against an aggressive and opponent like please. Mercier with ace three off. Jason and pairs his six, six and that's horrible news for Block. He'll need running yeah. threes. Can also hit a few Here's runners turn. to a chop. Five of clubs, five. block Mercier, officially busted and bounced from the tourney. The second time in the event, second time in the money for Jason Mercier. And Jason will face the winner of the Live B match. The winner yet to be determined. Let's take a look back at an early end of two matches, which left a couple of young guns in the money. And a couple of veterans with a countdown to next year's event. Welcome back. With Jonathan Duhamel onto the round of 16, we've got a new feature table. Quarterfinal opponents from last year, 10-time bracelet winner Doyle Brunson and 2010 heads-up semifinalist Dennis Phillips. Doyle's got a Sunday purple on. Let's see if he can exact some revenge over last year's loss. Grimace taking on the Hamburglar at the feature table. Does that make you Ronald McDonald? Easy there, Fry Guy. <laughs> Doyle with Ace Trey. He limps in. Those hands have looked at a lot of cards over the course of their career. Ace five for Dennis. He checks. Phillips pairs his ace. Brunson flops aces and trays. This is trouble. 2,000. Dennis checks. Doyle bets 2,000. And Phillips calls. No fireworks yet. Turn puts Phillips way out in front with aces and fives. Light the fuse. Phillips checks. Doyle bets 4,800. Here it comes. Dennis raises to 10,500. Well, yeah. And Doyle puts Phillips oh, all in. Don't think I can lay it down. You can't. Oh, let me think for a minute here. While Dennis thinks, we jump to an all-in Eugene Kachilov we'll on the right as now. Patrick Antonius covered. Top two Unfortunate pair flop for Patrick. Ace ten, top, top pair, pair ace against top two. Patrick He's looking for an ace. And here's 4th Street. It's the four and clubs. Four Patrick clubs. down top to one final pull Eugene. of the deck. And now the river. Five of hearts, Eugene Kachilov gets good. to keep Eugene playing. Patrick Antonius, he's got a plane to catch. Nice work in the debut for Kachilov. He's hanging on the winner of Mortensen Oppenheim. After some contemplation, Dennis called. Now he just needs to avoid a three. Phillips not in the business of laying down aces and fives. The nine of clubs doesn't help Doyle. Phillips doubles up. 
stacks are going to flip-flop. Doyle goes from a two-to-one chip lead to a two-to-one chip deficit. Catching up on the chip counts around the room, Eugene Kachilov, Jason Mercier, and Jonathan Duhamel already advancing through to the next round, but five tables still in play, including table four, where Olivier Bousquet is winning the matchup of the Live Bees. It's like insane. Wow. Yeah. It's not good for me. The line's now at six and 1,200. Oh, that's good for me, actually. I'm the queen of run good. Liv looks at ace seven suited. That's the right recipe to try to climb back into the match. She raises to 2,500. Seven six for Olivier. He calls. 5,000 in the middle. Bousquet flops an open ender. Check. He checks. Board is pretty disconnected from Liv's hand, so she'll check behind. Bousquet turns the nuts. Bori can only chop with a six. And Olivier is going to lead out. There's no way you can give him credit for the nuts straight. You always assume your opponent is going to be checking with the nuts. She calls the 3,000 bet. Four of clubs. Bousquet still with the nuts. That's 4, he bets 4,000. And Liv Mux. She took her one crack at hitting a six or an ace. And Olivier gives her some free info. I showed you my hand. What'd you show? The nuts. Yeah, the nuts? Yeah. Not a fan of that. No reason to give Liv help. At the outer tables and all in situation, David Oppenheim on the right with the chip lead and the best hand. But Carlos Mortensen knows what to do when he's in trouble. Yeah, he had no shortage of magic in the Here first round to park himself in this seat across from David. He's going to need more of it. Queen high, Queen couple high. of spades. Oppenheim's I mean, ace king still in front. The wand is out of juice and the hat is empty. Rag on the turn. Mortensen needs a six and a six only, but it's a deuce. David Oppenheim into the round of 16. David crept in through the back door. Second time in the field as an alternate. Second time in the money. Next up for David Oppenheim, Eugene Kachalov. Two more championship journeys complete their second leg. One journey, that of an event rookie. The other, that of a savvy veteran. Before I started playing poker, I was a mechanical engineer. I was working as, a, as an analyst at a hedge fund. I was a student studying physics. I was a professional magician. A graduate student in Texas. I was in a crib. Working in all those, like, uh, student jobs, you know, in the grocery stores. I was a part-time model. I've never really worked a full-time job or anything like that. I was an accountant before I played poker. I was an electrical engineer designing computer chips. I've done TV hosting. I tried to be a professional tennis player. I ran a small hedge fund with my partner. I also play rock guitar in a few bands. I delivered pizza when I was 17 years old. I was a sandwich artiste at Subway Sandwiches. The Picasso of cold cuts, Daniel Negreanu. <laughs> Former account manager at a trucking company, Dennis Phillips on the right, has the lead over Doyle Brunson at our featured table. GoDaddy.com pocket cam shows ace king suited for Phillips. He raises to 2,400. 10-4 suited for Doyle. He calls. Ace King suited. That's Angus certified. Choice cuts for Dennis pre-flop. Phillips makes kings. Brunson fours. Check, check to the turn. Trip kings for Dennis. Doyle drawing dead. Flop was a safe one for Dennis to check, and now he's disguised his hand. Brunson bets 3,000. Dennis calls. Reeling him in. Five of spades on the river. Five not likely to have connected with Dennis's hand at all. Doyle bets 7,000. 7, I'm all in. Dennis puts oh. Doyle all in. This is going to look a lot like Dennis had ace three. Okay. Doyle decides to have no part of it. No doubt Phillips had better than a four there. 
These two met last year in the quarterfinals. Let's take a look at the three key hands from that match. I'm all in. Doyle Brunson was on the verge of elimination, but caught running sixes to double up. <laughs> Next, it was Dennis's turn to dodge elimination. I call. Dennis. And from there, Phillips closed out the match to move on to the semis. Dennis ended up losing to eventual champion Annie Duke in last year's semifinals. This year, hoping to go a couple better. Queen eight for Doyle. Thinking about this one. Just putting the raise together. Raise it to 3,500. 3,500 is the raise. Ace all king in. for Dennis. He puts Doyle all in. Dennis, you gotta turn your cards in in between hands, buddy. Doyle mucks. Second straight ace king for Phillips, this time offsuit. Out at table four, blinds now one in 2,000. Olivier up more than two and a half to one over Liv. She looks at king queen. Artwork. All in. She's all in. in. Olivier pitches 6-4. You can expect to see some more of that out of Liv. Hovering around 14 big blinds. Olivier's held the chip lead the entirety of this match. Like an army of ants, Liv's chips have just been marching over to Olivier <laughs> since then. Ace 10 suited for Bousquet. He raises Wait, to 4,000. Pocket queens for Liv. That'll work. All in. She all goes all in. Snap call from Bousquet. Simple math. Let's look at the flop. Liv, better than a two to one favorite to double up and extend the match. Olivier and flops oh, the nut it. flush. flush flop. Liv's Olivier. luck may have run out. Run. Did I say favorite? <laughs> Give me a swap. Here is the turn. Board needs to pair or a queen needs to turn up. It's and another it diamond. Bousquet books Bousquet his ticket to the top to 16. The <sighs> Hard fought match. No shame in losing to Olivier for Liv Burry. Bousquet is gonna move on to face Jason Mercier. Yet another good friend. He's already bested Dwight Pilgrim. And now Liv, the online specialist, quickly proving that he's tough even without a mouse in his hand. Welcome back to Caesar's Palace. Let's send it down to Leanne. Liv, can you describe your emotions when that last flop came out? Um, pretty despondent, I guess. Uh, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't ideal. Um, I mean, it was a really fun match. It was great, great competitor. I mean, he's one of the best in the world. And, you know, it was just really fun to play against someone who's, you know, constantly outthinking you and so on. It just helps, you know, helps grow your own personal game. We appreciated having you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Olivia, how do you think you played? Uh, I think I played OK. I think Liv probably played a little bit better than me, actually. I just hit every single hand. Against any opponent who ran like that, I don't think, you know, there was really much anybody could have done. Right. You have Jason Mercier next. What are your thoughts? Well, you know, Jay's my boy, you know, I love Jay, uh, and I, I have a ton of respect for his game. I'm excited to play him, I think it'll be a great match, and, um, you know, hopefully I can continue to run good and uh, keep moving on. Excellent, we definitely think it's going to be a good match, good luck. Thank you. Daniel Cates holding ace king, that's here. the good news. He's at risk in facing a huge Cates. chip deficit against Chris Moneymaker. Chris Moneymaker. Cates Here's limp three bet on the button after a Moneymaker raise. Chris called. And it is ten Money nine. Maker Chris makes Money Maker. tens to move in front. What a disastrous flop for Daniel Cates. Cates jack. picks up a few and more outs on the turn. There are worse cards than the jack to hit. Now he needs a queen or a king to double up and avoid what I think would be an upset. And Money Maker five. fades Money the kings and queens and is in the money again. Good match, man. Chris goes to five and six on his career in the event. And he'll await the winner of Brunson Phillips. 
Players from the Hearts and Diamonds brackets making their entrance as they prepare for matchups in the round of 32. Well, Phil Gordon looking spiffy. <laughs> we'll see Emmett Smith and all the big names in action coming up in the next hour. Peter Eastgate and Eric Seidel definitely among those big names. Back at our featured uh, table. Poker's all about timing. Yep. Words of wisdom, absolutely right. Dennis Phillips up over two and a half to one in chips. No better source for words of wisdom when it comes to poker than that man right there, the Godfather. All in again. Doyle oh, goes I all in. I stopped looking till, till he said, I gotta see you, honey. Ace tray for Dennis. Oh. Almost 25,000 to call. I call. Dennis does. Oh. All in the call. All in and call. Phillips will be pleased to table. find out he's a favorite heading to the flop. Dennis Phillips leads little... in the match and has the best hand. Ace of diamonds, three of diamonds. Not by much. Doyle's looking for the non-vowel portion of the deck <laughs> alphabet. JKK, Doyle with two pair. No vowels, no problem for Doyle. Here's the turn. Put a diamond and make some sweat. Seven of, clubs. Seven of clubs. Not the sweatiest turn. Doyle's just got to dodge the ace. He three, fades the ace and doubles, and doubles up. Stacks almost dead even. Hitting the reset button here at the feature table. Just when Dennis Phillips thought he had Tex Dolly wrangled in, the gate opened up, and Dennis's ace three was bucked off the lead. Now Doyle saddled up and ready for another ride. Welcome back to the National Heads Up Poker Championship. The round of 16 is starting to take shape here at Caesars Palace. 2010 main event champ Jonathan Duhamel got by Antonio Esfandiari and his socks. Jason Mercier made the money for the second time in two years, defeating Andy Block. Eugene Kachalov made quick work of one of the toughest players in the field, Patrick Antonius. David Oppenheim worked his way past the matador, Carlos Mortensen. Chris Moneymaker welcomed himself to the jungle, defeating Daniel Cates. And Olivier Bousquet won the Battle of the Lithbees, flopping a flush to beat Liv Burry. Right now, we have a new table four, Barry Greenstein and Ayaz Mahmoud. Greenstein finishing in the money four out of six years at this event. He's up against Ayaz Mahmoud, the 2010 World Series of Poker heads-up champion. For many people, it's going to be their first look at Ayaz. Definitely got plenty of credentials when it comes to playing heads-up no limit. All in. Barry puts Ayaz all in. Snap call from Mahmoud. Ace Nothing to think about Barry. with ace-king ace suited. Clubs for Ayaz. Let's take a look at the flop. Ayaz poised to double up to almost 80,000. Both high, players ace, with ace trip four. aces. Mahmoud's king kicker has him in front. And it's six. Ayaz needs to avoid the three and wants to avoid the four or the six. Four or six would make a chop Here's pot. And it's, it's a, a queen. queen. Mahmoud's is king good. kicker, the Ayaz difference. Double He'll up. double up. Take a big lead Hands off the chips there, Ayaz. You know the routine. As they count the chips, we'll go back to the feature table. Doyle roughly 15,000 chips in front. Blinds now at 12 and 2,400. Dennis with pocket sevens. Six. Eight. Raises to 6,000. Ace queen suited for Doyle. All in. He puts Dennis all in. I call. Confident yeah, call Dennis from Phillips. Call. Only know one of my cards. Two sevens. He'll take two Dennis sevens into Ace battle any day. Spades. And I'm at risk. Him. And the flop. Grab your helmets. We're going racing. Doyle pairs his queen to move ahead. Queen Pretty bad flop for teams. Dennis Phillips. He's left searching for a seven. It's a drag on the turn, no help to Phillips. He still needs that seven or he is done. Here's the river. 21 the hard way or hasta la vista. And it's an eight, eight of Doyle diamonds. Brunson. Doyle Brunson exacts some revenge for last year's quarterfinal loss. 
story, bro. Well done, well done. Right. Had you on the ropes and couldn't put you away. Yeah. I almost called you with a queen, queen eight. Ooh, I wish you would have oh, now. Yeah. <laughs> Iasma Mood up over four to one in chips over Barry Greenstein. And you could just tell by looking at these guys' faces, oh. so much emotion. Oh, yeah, animated. Barry just went all in with suited connectors. Tom. Ayaz with ace nine suited calls. Nine ten of clubs for Barry. Ace nine mm. of diamonds for Ayaz. I see. Bad spot for Barry Greenstein. Here's a flop. He's dominated. Looking for clubs or a ten. Open ender oh, for Barry. Mahmoud's me. ace still good. Straight draw better than nothing for Barry. He's got plenty of outs. Eight, ten, or a king. Ayaz pairs his ace. Of clubs. Barry Barry's parachute just straight. got and bigger. Signs of life from Mahmoud. Here is the river. That's Mahmoud six manages to Mahmoud. fade the you endless array of outs. And he'll advance to the round of 16. 2 and 0 for Ayaz in his debut. Barry Greenstein has gotten past the first round every year. Fails to make the round of 16 this time, though. So the round of 32 in the clubs and spades brackets are complete. Olivier Bousquet, Jason Mercier, Ayaz Mahmoud, and Jonathan Duhamel advancing through in clubs. And Doyle Brunson, Chris Moneymaker, David Oppenheim, and Eugene Kachalov through in the spades bracket. I showed you my hand. What a surprise. Oh, let me think for a minute here. It's kind of a predicament. Oh, it's all about timing. Words of wisdom. Do the nose? News. Wow. So sick. <laughs> Coming up next, the conclusion of the round of 32 as the 2011 National Heads Up Poker Championship continues after this from Caesars Palace, Las Vegas. I've always been one to play with either sandals or I usually take my shoes off just given the temperature of the room. Um, I really like my feet to breathe. I know it sounds kind of silly, but it's true. If they sit in a shoe all day, they get all warm and sweaty and I don't like that. I used to do sandals, but sometimes it gets cold on set. I would bring socks and wear them when my feet got cold. I have it all figured out. I got a technique for every possible shoe, uh, you know, problematic situation I could be in. 